On June 25th and 26th of 1876, 263 United States soldiers, including Lieutenant Colonel George A. Custer and his armed forces, died fighting several thousand Lakota and Cheyenne warriors. This somber park honors the United States Army's 7th Cavalry and the Lakota and Cheyenne Native Americans in one of the Indians' last efforts to preserve their way of life. It is quiet and somber at the battlefield now, a place of solace, meditation, and thought. The National Cemetery contains around 5,000 veterans and their families. The veterans represent many wars. The cemetery was closed to internment in 1978 due to being full to capacity. So right when you come in, you can see the mass grave up on the knoll here. Um, do note that your dogs have to stay in the car. So when you get out of your car, you, you can't take your dogs with you. So be warned about that. It gets very, very warm out here. So pretty much right when you come in, look to your right and you're gonna see the, the soldier cemetery that they have um, right at the entrance. So literally when you pull in, you come into a parking lot and there's the soldiers' graves. Um, there's also, looks like there's many graves out there too as you walk out. Um, so it's very warm out here. There's not a ton of trees. Make sure you bring water. If you have a water bottle but you didn't bring water, this is really nice water bottle filling station right there next to the bathrooms so in this cemetery are many many women and men that fought for our country and so when you first see these headstones don't assume that this there are all the people that fought um, at Little Bighorn uh, they did not um, for instance, I have Sarah Ann Rollins from Montana right behind me, and she was in the Army Corps for World War II. She was born in 1902 and died in 1963. All these soldiers are unknown. This whole section, um, the parking lot's right there. So if you come from the parking lot and go left into section B, there's all these unknown soldiers here. So there's women, there's infants, there's people from local forts, there's Native Americans, all different wars. They're all buried here. I can't think of a better way of spending 4th of July than honoring our soldiers. So Reno's in Section C. Um, that's probably his grave with the American flag on it. So let's see. There's no more soldiers and family being interned here. Uh, this graveyard's actually full. Um, as you can see, it extends quite a bit down the hill. Um, but I think this is Reno right here. And sure enough, it is. Marcus Reno. He was assigned to the 7th Cavalry in 1871. 
he took part in the three column attack at the Battle of Little Bighorn. By the end of the battle, he became the senior surviving officer and is credited with saving what was left of the 7th Cavalry. Following the battle, he assumed acting command and returned to Fort Lincoln. His remains, which had been interned in an unmarked grave in Washington, D.C., were reinterned here so he could be with the men of the 7th Cavalry. White Man Runs Him was a Crow scout serving with General Armstrong Custer. He was part of the Little Bighorn fight, but was not on Last Stand Hill with Custer. According to White Man Runs Him's own accounts, after sending Major Reno's column to attack the Native American settlement first, Custer headed down Medicine Trail Creek to engage the Sioux in Cheyenne. White Man Runs Him recounts that he and the other Crow scouts intended to follow Custer down into the battle, but that the chief scout, Mitch Boyer, ordered them to rejoin the pack train instead, an action that saved their lives. There are so many grasshoppers here. So this is around the COVID um, epidemic. So <laughs> I guess the locusts are finally arriving. So just behind where um, the soldiers graveyard is um, up on the hill there is a mass grave as you can see the pillar up there and then the Native American Memorial is to your left um, but this whole area all around you where the battlefield and so you can drive through and see the different areas So right behind me is where they buried all the horses and it's just across from uh, last, we're on Last Hand Hill and it's just across from the mass grave. Um, so I was wondering what they did with all the horses and now I know. So here is the mass grave and all this area is where the horses were buried. Miles Keough was one of Custard's captains and has his own story to tell when it comes to this battle. But the story I'm going to tell you is about his horse. Two days after the battle, the Native Americans departed. They took with them all the horses that had not been severely wounded. The only living thing that remained at the scene was a severely injured horse named Comanche. The horse belonged to Captain Miles Keough. During the battle, Comanche suffered at least seven wounds, three of which were severe. He survived five companies of soldiers under General Custard. Without hesitation, it was determined that every effort should be made to save Comanche's life. U.S. soldiers and others nursed the war horse 
back to health. Comanche became a powerful symbol of the battle. Colonel Samuel D. Sturgis issued a general order declaring that no one would ever again ride Comanche and he would never be used to do work of any kind with the exception of an occasional parade with the seven cavalry, where he would be riderless. Comanche died of colic on November 7, 1891, at 29 years of age. The officers of the 7th Cavalry decided to preserve Comanche's remains. The naturalist Louis Lindsay Deitch, a well-known taxidermist, was summoned to do the job. Deitch agreed to waive his fee of $400 if the Army would let University of Kansas keep Comanche. That agreement was made. Comanche's remains are now preserved and on exhibit in the University of Kansas Natural History Museum. Comanche's remains have been on display in Lawrence, Kansas for more than a hundred years. This is the man's grave. So they're all buried underneath here. And then they have the individual markers down below. But they're they're not really buried under these markers. They are buried um, under the memorial. Now you can see custard is is the one that's in black there, that's his headstone. Um, but again, he's um, at West Point, he was moved. The remains of about 220 soldiers, scouts, and civilians are buried around the base of this memorial. The white marble headstones scattered over the battlefield denote where the slain troopers were found and originally buried. In 1881, they were reinterred in a single grave at this site. The officers' remains were removed in 1877 to various cemeteries throughout the country. General Custer was buried at West Point. that nobody survived um, but I've got a story about that which we'll talk about here in a minute but nobody would live to tell the story of what really happened except the Native Americans and so they don't have any Calvary accounts of Custer did this he decided to do that um, they could only go by where people fell the Native American accounts um, you know, and speculate what happens, but uh, nobody survived to tell the story. Um, a lot of times you see in movies where they say, leave this one alive so he can tell the story of, you know, how we beat them, and that didn't happen here. Um, but a lot of people don't realize that. Frank Finkel claimed to be the only survivor of Custard's Last Stand. Historians disagree over whether Finkel's claims are true, but he had provided several details that would only have been known by somebody who was at Little Bighorn. 
but they have found inconsistencies in his accounts. He did not make these claims until later in his life because he basically deserted the army. There is an August Finkel on the mass grave stone. Some believe this was him. It was common for soldiers to enlist under a different name or spelling. If you're interested in reading more about Frank Finkel, there's a wonderful book called Custard Survivors, The End of a Myth, The Beginning of a Legend. I put a link down in the description of this video and on our blog. Asaya Dorman was a U.S. Army scout and interpreter. He was the only African American to die at Custard's Last Stand. He was born a free man in Pennsylvania in 1832. His African and Delaware Indian mother, Rosetta, was freed from enslavement when she was a child. His African Jamaican father, George Dorman, came to the United States as an indentured servant. He married Celeste St. Pierre, whose family were Dakota. For the next few years, he worked as the body servant of George Alfred Sully and fought with him in the Civil War. In the Dakota Territory, Dorman and his wife and their children operated a wood chopping business and ranch on the Missouri River. Dorman also carried mail for the Army. He also joined the Yellowstone Expedition in 1876 as an interpreter. He lost his life while fighting under the command of Major Marcus Reno. Two days after the battle, his body was seen by soldiers who came to bury the dead. He might have been buried in the mass grave at that time although his remains have never been identified. Thus, a memorial stone was placed at the approximate site of his death. When Dorman was shot and wounded, it is said that the Sioux chief, Sitting Bull, recognized Dorman and stopped during the fighting to give him a last drink of water. Sitting Bull later said this was a true account of his actions. So you have to walk up here. There's a path right here. So when you park down below, you come up this path, you can see the military cemetery down there. Um, there's no parking up here. On a hot day, it's kind of a bummer. Um, but it is wheelchair accessible. It's all concrete. So this is the Native American um, memorial. It's just beautiful how you look out into the beautiful surrounding rolling hills. The artistry is just wonderful. represents all the Native Americans that were here. Talks about the power of unity. This is right beneath Custard's last stand, which there's the memorial right there. Until recently, there was no memorial that had honored the Native Americans. Their heroic sacrifice was never formally recognized. In 1991, the United States Congress changed the name of the battlefield and ordered the construction of an Indian memorial. 
it was dedicated in 2003 and was long overdue. It represents the tribes who fought to hold on to their way of life. Two moons from the Northern Cheyenne tribe was quoted as saying, 40 years ago, I fought custard till all were dead. I was then the enemy of the white man. Now I am the friend and brother living in peace together under the flag of our country. So basically, this is the mass grave over here. That's where Custard's headstone is. Again, he's not buried there anymore. He's in Arlington now, but his headstone's still there. Those headstones are separated. It's not where they fell. They're all under the mass grave. Um, and they spread out the headstone so they would have individual, you know, so they have, have, have some, you know, individual recognition. So, but if you look all out here are headstones where people fell. And the red headstones are Native American and the white were the Calvary. Um, so pretty much as far as I can see, you look out here and you'll see headstones where men fell. Now, I've seen pictures where, um, where these men fell and their headstones are, were bones, very large bones, and that was of their horses, where their horses fell. So this is the Keo Crazy Horse fight. Um, there's quite a few headstones down there. Um, Look to your right. That was the skirmish line. That was the skirmish line. So basically what they did is that the, the Native Americans just showered arrows into the skirmish line and that's why you see them just all falling in a row um they just they're probably sitting there reloading and a shower of arrows just came flying down from crazy horse and his men very interesting so one piece of advice i have is um come in the morning it'll be less crowded it's uh 90 degrees out right now and I'm frying and it is hot and I have gone through so much water bringing lots and lots of water with you I had one of those huge huge water jugs like those big ones where it's got the spout um, and we're practically all through it so bring lots of water with you if you're here in the summer I'm here at 4th of July and, it, and it's hot also note that in the afternoon storms roll in uh, so you don't want to be out here during a thunderstorm because there's no shade whatsoever definitely a, a place of remembrance for not only the soldiers that fell here but the Native American soldiers so make sure that when you come here that you show respect we have some great suggestions on some books on this subject down in our description of this video or you can go to our blog at coloradomartinis.com and that's martinis with an S. Make sure that you catch all our videos on the great state of Montana. Make sure to check out the links in the description. They help support this channel and thank you so much for coming by. You have no idea how much we appreciate it.